Hipponix, ancient Greek, Hipponix Gen, Hipponoctos of Ephesus and later Clazomenae, was an ancient Greek iambic poet who composed verses depicting the vulgar side of life in Ionian society in the 6th century BC. He was celebrated by ancient authors for his malicious wit especially for his attacks on some contemporary sculptors, Bupolis and Athenus, and he was reputed to be physically deformed a reputation that might have been inspired by the nature of his poetry. Little of his work survives despite its interest to Alexandrian scholars, who collected it in two or three books. He influenced Alexandrian poets searching for alternative styles and uses of language, such as Callimachus and Herodas, and his colorful reputation as an acerbic, social critic also made him a popular subject for verse, as in this epigram by Theocritus. Here lies the poet Hipponix. If you are a scoundrel, do not approach the tomb, but if you are honest and from worthy stock, sit down in confidence and, if you like, fall asleep. Ancient literary critics credited him with inventing literary parody and lame poetic meters suitable for vigorous abuse, as well as with influencing comic dramatists such as Aristophanes. His witty, abusive style appears for example in this quote by Herodian, who however was mainly interested in its linguistic aspects many of the extant verses were preserved for us by lexicographers and grammarians interested in rare words. Tis omphalotomos se ton diopliga epsis capelusin ascarazanta what navel snipper wiped and washed you as you squirmed about, you crack-brained creature, where navel snipper signifies a midwife. Life. Ancient authorities record the barest details about his life sometimes contradicting each other and his extant poetry is too fragmentary to support autobiographical interpretation a hazardous exercise even at the best of times. The Marmor Perium, only partially preserved in the relevant place, dates him to 541 40th BC, a date supported by Pliny the Elder in this comment on the theme of sculpture. There lived in the island of Chios a sculptor Milos who was succeeded by his son Mechides and his grandson Acermus. The latter's sons, Bupolis and Athenus, had the very greatest fame in that art at the time of the poet Hipponix who was clearly alive in the 60th Olympiad 540-37. Natural History 36.4.11 Archaeological corroboration for these dates is found on the pedestal of a statue in Delos, inscribed with the names Mechides and Acermus and dated to 550-30 BC. The poet therefore can be safely dated to the second half of the 6th century BC. According to Athenius, he was small, thin and surprisingly strong the Byzantine Encyclopedia Suda, recorded that he was expelled from Ephesus by the tyrants Athenagoras and Comas, then settled in Clazomenae, and that he wrote verses satirizing Bupalus and Athenus because they made insulting likenesses of him. A scholiast commenting on Horace's epodes recorded two differing accounts of the dispute with Bupalus, characterized however as a painter in Clazomenae. Hipponix sought to marry Bupalus's daughter but was rejected because of his physical ugliness, and Bupalus portrayed him as ugly in order to provoke laughter. According to the same scholiast, Hipponix retaliated in verse so savagely that Bupalus hanged himself. Hipponix in that case closely resembles Archilochus of Paros, an earlier iambic poet, who reportedly drove a certain Lycams and his daughters to hang themselves after he too was rejected in marriage. Such a coincidence invites skepticism. The comic poet Diphilus took the similarity between the two iambic poets even further, representing them as rival lovers of the poet Sappho's life of Hipponix, as revealed in the poems, resembles a low-life saga centered on his private enmities, his amorous escapades and his poverty but it is probable he was another Petronius, depicting low-life characters while actually moving in higher social circles. In one fragment, Hipponix decries, Bupolis, the mother fucker Metricoides with Arete. The latter evidently being the mother of Bupolis, yet Arete is presented as performing fellatio on Hipponix in another fragment and, elsewhere, Hipponix complains, "'Why did you go to bed with that rogue Bupolis? again apparently referring to Arete whose name ironically is Greek for virtue. The poet is a man of action but, unlike Archilochus, who served as a warrior on Thassos, his battlefields are close to home. Take my cloak, I'll hit Bupolis in the eye. For I have two right hands and I don't miss with my punches. Hipponix's quarrelsome disposition is also illustrated in verses quoted by Zetzes, where the bard abuses a painter called Mimnas, and advises him thus. When you paint the serpent on the trireme's full oared side, quit making it run back from the prow ram to the pilot. What a disaster it will be and what a sensation. 
you low-born slave, you scum, if the snake should bite the pilot on the shin, fragment 28, Topic. Work Hipponics composed within the Iambus tradition which, in the work of Archilochus, a hundred years earlier, appears to have functioned as ritualized abuse and obscenity associated with the religious cults of Demeter and Dionysus but which, in Hipponics's day, seems rather to have had the purpose of entertainment. In both cases, the genre featured scornful abuse, a bitter tone and sexual permissiveness. Unlike Archilochus, however, he frequently refers to himself by name, emerging as a highly self-conscious figure, and his poetry is more narrow and insistently vulgar in scope. With Hipponics, we are in an unheroic, in fact, a very sordid world, amounting to a new conception of the poet's function. He was considered the inventor of a peculiar meter, the skazan, halting iambic as Murray calls it or choliam, which substitutes a spondy or trochee for the final iambus of an iambic scenarius, and is an appropriate form for the burlesque character of his poems. As an ancient scholar once put it, In his desire to abuse his enemies he shattered the meter, making it lame instead of straightforward, and unrhythmical, i.e. suitable for vigorous abuse, since what is rhythmical and pleasing to the ear would be more suitable for words of praise than blame. Demetrius of Phalarum Most of the surviving fragments are in choliams but others feature trochaic tetrameter and even dactyls, the latter sometimes in combination with iams and even on their own in dactylic hexameter, imitating epic poetry. Ancient scholars in fact credited him with inventing parody and Athenius quoted this diatribe against a glutton Euromedonchides, composed in dactylic hexameter in mock heroic imitation of Homer's Odyssey. Muse, sing of Eurymedonchides, see swilling Charybdis. His belly a sharp slicing knife, his table manners atrocious. Sing how, condemned by public decree, he will perish obscenely. Under a rain of stones, on the beach of the barren salt ocean. Fragment 128 Most archaic poets including the iambic poets Archilochus and Seminides were influenced by the Ionian epic tradition, as represented in the work of Homer. Except for parody, Hipponics composed as if Homer never existed, avoiding not only heroic sentiment but even epic phrasing and vocabulary. He employed a form of Ionic Greek that included an unusually high proportion of Anatolian and particularly Lydian loanwords, as for example here where he addresses Zeus with the outlandish Lydian word for king nominative pomies. O Zu Pater Zu Theon Olympian Pami Tm O Kadokas Chrysan Zeus, Father Zeus, Sultan of the Olympian Gods. Why have you not given me gold? Fragment 38 Eating, defecating and fornicating are frequent themes and often they are employed together, as in Fragment 92, a tattered papyrus which narrates a sexual encounter in a Maladorus privy, where a Lydian-speaking woman performs some esoteric and obscene rites on the narrator, including beating his genitals with a fig branch and inserting something up his anus, provoking incontinence and finally an attack by dung beetles. A wild scene that possibly inspired the Enithia episode in Petronius's Satyricon. Hipponics remains a mystery. We have lost the matrix of these fascinating but puzzling fragments, ripped from their frame they leave us in doubt whether to take them seriously as autobiographical material unlikely, but it has been done, as complete fiction but there is no doubt that Bupolis and Athenus were real people, as part of a literary adaptation of some ritual of abuse a comos or something similar, or as dramatic scripts for some abusive proto-comic performance. Whatever they were, they are a pungent reminder of the variety and vitality of archaic Greek literature and of how much we have lost." B. M. Knox The extant work also includes fragments of Epodes FR, 115 but the authorship is disputed by many modern scholars, who attribute them to Archilochus on various grounds, including for example the earlier poet's superior skill in invective and the fragment's resemblance to the tenth Epode of Horus an avowed imitator of Archilochus. Archilochus might also have been the source for an unusually beautiful line attributed to Hipponix a line that has also been described as clear, melodious and spare as a line of Sappho. A moi genoito parthenos kale te kai tiraina fr. 119 If only I might have a maiden who is both beautiful and tender. Topic. Transmission and reception 
Few fragments of his work survived through the Byzantine period despite his earlier popularity with Alexandrian poets and scholars. The Christian fathers disapproved of his abusive and obscene verses and he was also singled out as unedifying by Julian the Apostate, the pagan emperor, who instructed his priests to "...abstain not only from impure and lascivious acts but also from speech and reading of the same character." No initiate shall read Archilochus or Hipponix or any of the authors who write the same kind of thing." Moreover, Hipponix's Ionic dialect and his extensive use of foreign words made his work unsuited to an ancient education system that promoted Attic, the dialect of classical Athens. Today the longest fragment of complete, consecutive verses comprises only six lines. Archaeologists working at Oxyrhynchus have added to the meagre collection with tattered scraps of papyrus, of which the longest, published in 1941, has parts of over 50 choliambics. Old comedy, as a medium for invective and abuse, was a natural successor to iambus from the viewpoint of Aristotle and Aristophanes, the master of old comedy, certainly borrowed inspiration from Hipponics. Someone ought to give them a bupolis or two on the jaw that might shut them up for a bit. The men's chorus says about the women's chorus in Lysistrata, and, "'Wonderful poet, Hipponics!' Dionysus exclaims in frogs, while trying to disguise the pain inflicted on himself during a flogging. A quote attributed to Hipponics by Stobius actually appears to have been composed by a new comedy poet. <laughs> Some Hipponactian sayings There are two days when a woman is a pleasure, the day one marries her and the day one carries out her dead body. Di hemerai gynaikos eisen hedestai hoten game tis kakfere tevnachayan, drank like a lizard in a privy, croaking like a raven in a privy, sister of cow manure, opening of filth, self-exposer. Borboropan Anisertopolin, Mimnas, you who gape open all the way to the shoulders. Mimna Katamokane, Interprendial Pooper. Mesagidorpochestes Topic Notes Topic Citations Topic Sources Easterling, P. E. Series Editor, Bernard M. W. Knox, Editor, Cambridge History of Classical Literature, V. I. Greek Literature, 1985. ISBN 0-521-21042-9, cf. Chapter 5. Elegy and Iambus. pp. 158-164 on Hipponics. Murray, Gilbert, A History of Ancient Greek Literature, 1897. Cf. P. 88. Todd M. Compton, Hipponics, Creating the Pharmacos at the Center for Hellenic Studies. This article incorporates text from a publication now in the public domain, Chisholm, Hugh, ed. 1911. Hipponics. Encyclopedia Britannica, 11th ed. Cambridge University Press. Topic. External links. Quotations related to Hipponics at Wikiquote